Yo, what is up everyone? Jay here with another Family Heroes video and today we're going to take a look at the 6th Anniversary Fate channel. And yeah, we have a lot of stuff to go over and I can't believe we've been playing this game for 6 years. Uh, I have at least. I've been playing since day 1 and we're still going strong. I still love and enjoy this game. So let's go over all the stuff that they revealed. Uh, a lot of good stuff here and some surprising things for sure. I think they've been more generous with some of the things they've given us for free because, you know, we're going to get some freebies. But first of all, we're going to look at... The Choose Your Legend 7 winners, which is Male, Robin at first for the Male Division, Soren in second place, Govig for first place in the Women's Division, and Female Corn for second place. So um, if you do, you know, if you did go online and you saw some leaks, uh, it did leak this entire Choose Your Legend 7 and also the seasonal for the Valentine's. So it's kind of crazy that it got leaked. Um, but I'm not too surprised by these results. Um, Govig is kind of, I was kind of hoping she wasn't going to win. I'm not mad about her or anything. It's just... One of those moments where it's like come on man <laughs> because gold vague does attract those kind of crowds i don't really have to expand more upon that but you guys know what i'm talking about and she just got into the game too so we don't know much about her it's just pure fan service horniness uh, fan servicey stuff but uh you know it is what it is whatever um not really that excited for her but i am most excited for uh, male robin because he has been in the running for a long time same with female corn i guess so male robin should be hype because Robin doesn't have his 11 sword yet. I hope he gets a legendary alt or this alt has 11 sword where he can be a tactician because Robin and Faye is most known for his alts as being just Grima. There's just too much Grima. <laughs> so I'm really hoping this brave alt is not just a Grima Robin. Uh, and for Soren, I feel indifferent about him. I'm not a huge fan for him. Uh, but, you know, I, I know a lot of fans of him are pretty happy. So Soren does get his third alt, believe it or not. He already has a Soren emblem, but now he has his brave version coming up. So yeah, going to be interesting to see how crazy these dudes are going to be. And that is Shooter Legend 7. So um, I don't really have that much to say about it because I don't really like these characters too much besides Robin because I think Robin's one of the coolest avatars. Um, but yeah, Robin should be definitely hype and hope it's not green mode. But yeah, let's move on to the anniversary stuff for the Hero Fest, Special Hero Summon, Anniversary Maps, Login Bonuses, Quests, and like GHB reruns. So we get a ton of good stuff here. We get an Ascended Floret, which is very, very generous. Um, this is one of the most sought after resources, of course. Six orbs, 600 uh, divine codes. 60 of each flower 600 grails which is amazing 60 coins and 60 divine dew so that's pretty nice for the login bonus and that doesn't end there because we also have the quests coming as well that you actually have to earn yourself you get 15 tickets one celestial stone eight orbs 1600 aether stones uh, 500 special aether stones which I, I think are for the anniversary like furniture that you can use the aether raid 60 more of each flower six uh, blessings which are also appreciated always appreciated 600 metals 160 stones to refine 1600 crystals and shards so that's pretty nice um i wish they gave us more orbs but um they do give us a lot of tickets so we'll take what we can get for sure it's only 14 orbs in total compared to like 600 grails we get but still pretty nice and then of course for the anniversary tempest trials we also get these i think we're going to get those as rewards in the tempest which is pretty nice uh 60 uh you know trait fruits and 2000 divine codes and 60 of each uh, flower again so those are always appreciated next we have the anniversary grand hero party quest i'm kind of mad about this because it was data mine that rutger was on here and i literally just plus 10 rutger uh, so like the day of so it, i could have saved so many grails if i just waited but i how would i have known rutger would get a rerun you know i mean i know they do this every once in a while but i guess they just went over my head but yeah a lot of these merge projects are pretty popular so if you are trying to merge them up you can get a free five star merge and save your grail so that's pretty nice i just wish i could have saved on rutger but whatever it is what it is um, a lot of these units have pretty solid refines i mean a good amount of them like cynthia and har have really good refines astrum though and like cormag and like uh kemp are waiting for refines but yeah we have some solid uh, merge projects ghb units for free and then the hero fest banner for the sixth anniversary and it's pretty nice we have a Senna Marita. Atri, Ascended to Dune, and Winter Lysithea, and Loot, who are all pretty good units. Ascended Marita and Dune are probably the best units overall, but um, Lysithea is one of the fastest mages in the game. She's a very strong nuke, and of course, they also, the two Ascended heroes give you the floret if you never got them before. And Atri, even though her fodder isn't the best, she is one of the best ranged uh, units in the game, ranged flyers in the game. She's definitely annoying. So yeah, that's pretty good. And we also get tickets for those as well, which is great. And then we also have the special hero summon that happens every year. This is basically Russian roulette where you pick a color where you hope to get a color you want and you hope to get the unit you want. And you can only do this once. So um, just right off the bat, off first glance, red and blue seem like the best colors to me because they have a ton of good units. You have two really good sword inventories with Young Ike and Young Mia. You have Summer Edogard is one of the best armor units in the game. You also have Duoduma who's one of the best far saves in the game. 
uh, Dorothea, who's an amazing dancer, Ninja Camilla, who's amazing as well, and Dua Krom, of course. And then blue, you got uh, Summer Thor, Attack Speed Finish 4 on Halloween Corn, and Godlike Reflexes on Ninja Lin. So, and also Winter Cordelia. So, a lot of good stuff in red and blue. I say the most lackluster color is probably colorless, but still, you have um, the new New Year um, Asker and Emblem, which is pretty cool. And then green also has some solid units with, um, you know, Valentine's Lucina, Spring Sonia. So, all the colors are good for sure. You just have to hope and pray. Uh, pick an orb and pray that you actually get the unit you want a lot of the time before i've gotten a character that i already had but it is what it is at least you get something for free right and then we have the six anniversary special maps which are going to have orbs i think hopefully which are pretty nice those are going to be really easy to do and then of course the hero rises for this year which is pretty stacked i think i might have mentioned it before but hero rises this year is very very stacked because there's a lot of red units in the past year and the beginning of this year that are very very strong just to name some kade and lynn my girl you have Dual Krom, you have Summer Edelgard, you have regular Embla, just to name a few. So Hero Rises is going to be very competitive, I feel like, than it's ever been. Because um, you have to remember that everybody is going to get this for free, whoever wins. And then they're going to put them, um, I think they're going to put them in a voting outlet. Uh, I think they do. I don't know if I'd skip over that. Either way, we're going to get them for free. Um, and they will appear as focus heroes, or the one who wins will be the focus hero. So vote wisely. Uh, you know the most popular gonna win and then yeah, these are the More anniversary celebrations, which is pretty nice. I think that's the total. Is that the total or is this another set? Either way, we're getting a bunch of free stuff but Yeah, let's move on to the fates seasonal banner for Valentine's and it is entirely like I said Fire Emblem Fates And even though Fates is one of my least favorite Fire Emblem games I do appreciate some of the alts here, especially Effie, which we'll get to she looks really amazing But the first one is Takami. Uh, I don't remember when the last time Tabi got Takami got an alt here but it's been a while, I feel like. So here he is, Troubled Heart. And this was also leaked, by the way. So uh, not a surprise. But hey, I can save my orbs. Unless someone here has really good skills or fodder that I want for one of my favorites. We don't know the skills quite yet. They haven't re revealed the actual trailer. But we can see a bit of what their weapon does in terms of stats. And we can see, um, you know, their art, obviously. And what kind of weapon types they are. So Takami here is a blue infantry mage, it looks like. Yeah, blue infantry mage. Leo here, which is... Nice to see Leo because he's actually one of my favorite, or my only, <laughs> one of the only Fates Royals I actually like. So I'm um, happy he's getting an alt with an actual PRF because he has a Dusk Bloom bow. You know it's not a PRF because it doesn't have a plus after it. He is kind of slow as usual, but he has a very min max attack and res stats with a really low defense though. Um, and he also has a new, looks like a remote sparrow, but for attack and resistance. So that's pretty cool. He also has a trace skill. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool and I hope this alt is actually pretty good because Leo doesn't really have the best luck with getting good alts in terms of unit viability. So that's Leo. And up next we have Hana here as a sword unit and she's a sword armor this time. Um, I guess it shouldn't be that surprising because we have a lot of units who are armor units that don't look like armors and Hana here is no exception. Striving Heart. Um, she's the demote I believe just judging based on her uh, base kit because she has um, no PRF and she has armored stride which is definitely like a demo type of skill at this point I can see that happening at four stars and special fighter being at five stars there she is hitting that sword fighter with ignis she has a very min max uh, stat spread with 56 attack 46 base speed which is insane uh, might be the fastest in the game I think that might be just as fast that might be the fastest in the game honestly I think is that tied with Desert Nino, Kane Nino? I don't remember. But still, one of the fastest units in the game, regardless. Um, 41 defense and not even bad resistance. So she's a very new gen armor for sure. Petal Fall Blade is going to give her extra stats. We don't know the other effects yet. Um, of course, we don't know the full skills yet, but we will we shall see soon enough. And the next unit is the free unit, Effie. I've always liked Effie from a uh, physique standpoint for sure. Um, she looks really pretty here. It's definitely nice to see her in a more girly outfit because she's a very burly woman, I guess, because she loves to work out. And I really like the pants in her and this flower axe that she has because she's actually an axe armor this time. Um, she's also holding chocolate, which is cute. But yeah, Effie, dedicated heart here is very fast just like hana very min max 43 speed 32 defense and 23 resistance which is kind of weird to see because does her base version have higher defense than this uh, either way 32 defense isn't the highest on her armor but you can see she's a very fast uh, min maxed armor so she's gonna be fun to build if you are looking for a speedy armor and you know have savvy fighter and then the dual hero is elise and sakura so uh this is a dual hero that i'm not that excited for not excited for at all but um they are pretty popular i guess uh, the Sweetheart Royals, and they do bring some interesting things to the table because they have the first offensive healing special in the game. Now, uh, not sure if this is inheritable, 
But either way, this is a big step for healers because even if it's not heritable, maybe this means you know they will get an offensive special in the future because healers can they need everything they can get. And we do have a lot of good healers, but now you know Lisa Sakura here actually having an offensive special is going to help them a lot. Um, let me look at their skills real quick. Um, but yeah, so they're going to be very strong. They are dang it, it's going so fast. They are a cavalry healer, of course, and um, holy pressure is going to be kind of cool. So. Uh, can't wait to see if that's inheritable. Dust Dawn Staff, we don't know what that does. They have Catch 4. And it looks like Dazzling Staff 4 or Wrathful Staff 4, actually, which is kind of cool. Or maybe it's a new Dazzling or new Staff skill. I don't know. They come with Return Plus and um, I think that's Odd Recovery. One of the recovery skills. But yeah, that is Duo, Sakura, and Elise. Or should I say Elise and Sakura? Um, but yeah, Holy Pressure is going to be interesting for sure. Like I said, I think they've been uh, more generous with stuff because they didn't have to give us... Uh, I mean, healers have just been starving for a long time. So if this is inheritable, it's going to be nice. But yeah, that is the Fates... Um, Valentine's Banner with Takami, Leo, Hana, Duo, Elise, and Sakura in the free unit Effie. So that's going to be pretty cool. Can't wait for the rewards on that. Next, we have the uh, update information with a bunch of new stuff, including the Hero Merit increase, which I'm excited for. As you guys know, I am a Hero Merit Feather Fiend. I love grinding for feathers and trying to plus 10. That's why I have so many plus 10. So I'm trying to get to 100. So this is going to help because that means any everybody that's maxed in my barracks is going to have an extra 1,000 feathers. So <laughs> can't wait to grind for those. Um, and then they also have new accessories and stuff, which I don't really care too much about, but you can get new um, hats and whatnot. So that's pretty cool. Now we have some of the biggest changes in this Fate channel, and that is another change to Arena. So they just recently added the Arena ticket. Now they made Arena even easier. So basically now what happens, if you have a legendary hero that is a bonus hero, in their example, Legendary Dimitri right here, that means that your legendary hero, now after you win, I think, uh, your score will be the highest it possibly can be. So that means you don't have to use crests and try to fish for scores now. Obviously, your score still depends on how your team scores, um, but still, this is going to help because Arena is not going to be as fishy, I guess, um, in terms of getting scores and help your run go faster. That's really nice. And the second change, on top of, you know, as well as having the, sa the same benefit of having a Legendary Hero that's a bonus, is that even if Unit dies, as you can see, Legendary Marth kills someone, uh, you still have the run intact, meaning you don't actually lose points. So on top of having Tactical Retreat already, you have this to fall back on as well. So even if you lose somebody, you still score the highest, which is great. Honestly, I know some people, hardcore players might hate this, but I don't mind it because it means more people are going to play Arena. And of course, Intelligent Systems want people to play their modes. And they have definitely improved Arena a lot with the Arena ticket and now this as well. So I think this is a welcome change for sure. I like this a lot. And, you know, Arena can be a very stressful mode. And, of course, they're adding Arena maps as well. A lot more maps that are flyer favored and say F you to Cavaliers. So that is the Arena changes that I welcome for sure. Next, we have the new or more heroes added to the weekly revivals because, of course, the pool is getting bloated. So we have to move more of them to weekly revivals. And then, of course, more four-star special heroes uh, that are added to old seasonals, which is nice as well. Um, and we'll get into more summoning changes that I also love as well after this Legendary Hero Remix for Thrusir and Peony. Thrusir basically gets um, a better killing intent with Exposure, which is very fitting, of course. And she has a better HP threshold on her Desperation, and she comes with Attack Speed Ideal. Now, the Refine is going to judge how good Thrusir actually gets, because this, this Remix is nice, but it's not like going to make her insane or anything. Definitely a nice improvement, though. But the Remix, or the Refine, is going to be what we'll wait for, and hopefully she becomes good again. So that's Thrusir, uh, Thrusir, and then we have Peony here getting Gentle Dream Plus. I think the only difference between this and regular Gentle Dream is now it neutralizes penalties. It keeps the same effect as before, so it's kind of like what Legendary Leaf got, which is kind of a small upgrade, but still, this is nice. Um, she's already one of the best Mythics in the game, being a dancer, being one of the best dancers in the game, so that's really cool. Um, so she doesn't have to really get that much of an insane remix or refine, but we'll see what happens. Crossbow Res. Uh, which is definitely an upgrade from Fortify Res, which he had, I think. So that's pretty cool for her Cardinal Directional Support uh, for Peony. And then on the Mythic Hero Remix, you can spark on both of them, which is nice. And uh, yeah, that's going to be nice for people who are trying to get these units and trying to merge them up. And now here's the summoning changes that I am all for. This is the summoning, or this is called the Focus Charges, I think. So basically what happens, if you, whenever you get an off-focus hero or a Pity Break, this circle will light up. One of the circles will light up, so... Um, once all three are lit up, so you can see she got a Senate Celica, so that means one circle lights up. When all three of them are lit up, that means the next five star you get after that will always be a focus hero. So in a way, it's kind of like a mini spark. You still have to get the colors you actually want to get. You know, you still have to battle with the color stone RNG, but this basically makes summoning way easier and actually helps people get the units they actually want or trying to merge up. So this is amazing change to summoning because... 
summoning. I mean, they've made a gradual changes to summoning over the years, but this is a nice change as well. On top of having sparks as well, um, you know, now you're more guaranteed because now pity breaks and off focuses are not just, you know, nice fodder or just an off focus pity break. Now they actually technically help you to get the unit you actually want. So that's really cool. Um, and these are the banners they actually apply to. So new new heroes for main series main series banners, uh, new hero revival banners that are like you know the voted ones on Twitter. You have special revival banners. So old seasonals, it's pretty nice to have that as well. And summoning focuses and weekly revivals, and of course the fate pass benefits. They only apply to um, if you have fate pass. They also apply to current special heroes and then uh, hero fest summonings. Um, of course, it doesn't apply to legendaries or mythics because they don't have all focuses. But yeah, even after you pick. Uh, after you use the focus charge, you still can use it again for the rest of the banner. It just doesn't carry on to another banner, so it's pretty nice. Um, and even after you do a regular spark after 40 summons, you still keep the charges. So I like this change a lot. I think it's a big change that not enough people are talking about. Um, but you know, if you are trying to merge up or get a unit you really want for a skill or just to have them, this is going to really help a lot because you can get very unlucky summoning getting off focus. I know the pain. So anyone who's been playing this game for a substantial amount of time knows that you know somebody can go very terribly so this even if it goes bad you technically still have something good to look forward to with this focus charge so i like this change a lot i think it's going to help a lot um and even after you spark you, the charges don't reset so this is a welcome change i think this and the arena chains are the best changes or the best news in this fate channel for sure um for me personally um but yeah that's pretty much the fate channel and of course the cy not cyl sorry what i'm talking about the um anniversary art which is one of my favorite things of every anniversary because we get to it really makes you take a moment to appreciate all the talented artists we have in this game ichikawa halu drew legendary shida and she looks absolutely peaceful and so adorable here and of course some of the other characters they've drawn like ophelia and Micaiah. she looks absolutely so cute here and um like i said it's one of my favorite parts because you get to appreciate the artists and all the work that they do for this game I mean, just look at this. Daizuki Zuka never misses. Just drew from Mortis recently. Harden versus Harden goes hard. You have uh, Valbar, Kamui, and Leon. Uh, Suzuki Rika. Uh, you guys can you guys can watch it yourself. I'm not going to go every single art on Brave Seleph, but I'm just going to show you some of my favorite ones. I think Brave Tiki is in here as well. Um, Senri, Akita Senri is also one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, Brave Tiki is here. Looking cute and happy as always. I, lo I love the art here. This anniversary art is so good every year. Um... Yeah, the Corns and Robins. We have uh, Summer Edgard and Altina who look amazing. And uh, another one of my favorites is Thor and uh, Loki here. They look so hot here <laughs> in their formal-ish attire. Uh, Mashima and Shigeki does not miss drawing Thor and Loki. So I'm all for girls wearing like formal outfits that don't they don't really wear that much. You know, kind of like suits, suit kind of deal. Um, but yeah, the anniversary art always slaps, and it's one of the things I look forward to the most. There's Ganglot as well, looking really cool. So yeah, that is pretty much the Fate channel. Um, I'm not that excited for Well, obviously, but um, I have a couple friends who do you know support some of those characters, so I'm happy for them. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see how good they are and how strong they are, actually. Especially Govik, because she's like, you know, the antagonist of the current book. And the last uh, is Alphonse and Legendary Veronica. So yeah, uh, definitely, you know, take your time to appreciate these artists because they do a lot for this game. But yeah, that is the Fate Channel, guys. Let me know what you guys think down below. I thought the Fate Channel was pretty good overall. They definitely gave us some nice surprises with some of the free stuff they're giving us, like the Ascended Floret. And also the arena changes and summoning changes, which I love that change because, you know, any kind of changes to summoning is well appreciated for sure in a game that's RNG based. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you enjoyed and uh, wish you luck on your Russian roulette summoning when you go for the um, the one stone to get one of the seasonals. And, you know, if you are summoning on the Fates banner, good luck as well. Um, but yeah, that is the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed and please stay safe out there. Peace out.